Hello and welcome to Tiny Desk Netting with Emma. Today I'm going to be talking about an actual Fair Isle project, which I don't feel like I do that often anymore. Um, I feel sort of bad that I've like started this as a Fair Isle channel and then I've like massively branched out, but I try not to massively branch out. Like I kind of now try to keep it to like, I don't know, stuff I get in the mail <laughs> and like socks and then Fair Isle. So today's a Fair Isle video. Um, today I'm wearing my blue F Mailey in Briggs and Little Heritage and Bartlett Yarns Fisherman's 2-ply. Uh, the link to my Ravelry page is down below and this is a free pattern. Um, I've worn this one a bunch lately because it's been cold. So you might have seen me wearing this in a recent video. That's because it's cold and this is one of my thickest sweaters. I knit this at a really, really tight gauge for the yarn. It should be knitted about 16 stitches over four inches and I knitted at 18 stitches over four inches. So it's like bulletproof, it's so warm. Anyway, let me talk about my project. This is a new cowl that I designed and I used the book Selbu Patterns, which is not in front of me right now. So I'm gonna have to pause this at some point and run and get it. Oops, that's the seam, so don't look at that. Um, so this is just a, I mean, it's totally fair isle. There's, I mean, it's Norwegian. Technically the pattern is from Norway, um, but it is fair isle in that I change colors a lot, both background and foreground, <laughs> and there's a pop. Um, this is, obviously it stands up, but as you can see, it's not super like stiff and it's kind of like flimsy. That's because the inside is cashmere. Um, so something that sometimes happens if you are a knitter is that, I'm gonna put this on so you can see it. Um, Non-knitters will give you skeins of yarn. And they don't really know what kind of yarn you like to knit with necessarily. Like they go to the yarn store and it's like a nice thing because they got you yarn. And this is so soft on my neck, oh my gosh. Um, so my brother got me this skein of cashmere for Christmas and it's called Cardiff Cashmere. He got it at Must Love Yarn in Shelburne, Vermont, but you can get Cardiff Cashmere, I don't know many other places. I searched for it online because I had to know how many yards it was after I'd used it and thrown away the ball band. Um, it's a 25 gram ball and it's like DK weight. So it's not very much yarn. So you're like, what the heck am I gonna do with this super fancy yarn? And then I was like, well, I'm knitting this cowl. I was already like partially done with this cowl. And I was like, oh, I'll line it with cashmere. That'll be so nice. So that's what I decided to do. Um, Cause like you could, I could have lined it with more Shetland wool. Um, like the Radiant Star Cowl. I have a version of the Radiant Star Cowl that's patterned by Ella Gordon. Um, and it's the same type of pattern as this and that it's a funnel. And this is also sort of like the Snuggle is Real, which was by um, Maxim Sear, which also is slouchy. And that one is um, minted in DK weight with mosaic color work. And then the inside is like Surrey Alpaca held double. And it has a, a cinch. I actually made one of those and then I made a bunch of kits, like I dyed my own yarn and so I made kits for my local yarn store. If you're in Vermont, you can go to Must Love Yarn in Shelburne and buy one. If you're watching this like somewhat recently in early 2022 because they still have some from last summer when I made them. Um, but I don't have the sample because it's at the store so people will buy it. Yeah, so let's talk about the colors of this and then I will go talk about the design process and get the book. Okay, so here I used three background, can you hear me? Three background colors. I used a white, and I used a light gray, and I used a medium gray. Those are all in cones, and I've got them all here. All of this yarn is Jameson and Smith 2 play jumper weight, except the pink, which is Shetland Spindrift by Jameson's of Shetland. So the white, color 1A. I have cones. I always have neutrals on cones because I use them so much. Um, so I kind of like collect the cones. This is 202 light gray. I can't remember you can see it. And then this is 27, which is a medium gray, although these don't look super different. Um, if you buy 202 in the ball, it's a lot lighter. Um, there's less contrast than I thought that there would be in the between these two colors if you're using this color off a cone. It's kind of normal to have variation like that though. Sometimes some if this is just like residue on the yarn that it will wash off. So it might be lighter after you block your piece. Um, and there's just like variation in cheap colors, so, and dye lots, so it's not really something to get upset about. Um, I wouldn't really mind based on that kind of thing. Um, and then I used one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pattern colors. So in order of light to dark, 
This one is FC34 mix. Let's see if I can hold them all. Probably can't in one hand. This one is FC39 mix. Mm, this one is F142 cyan blue. That's what it says. I got 18 royal. Let's do this. Ah, fun. It's always fun. 135 blue and 21 navy. Um, these two are heathered and these four are not heathered. So the light, the lightest two are heathered and the rest of them are not. Uh, the two grays are also heathered. So the white's obviously not heathered, but, and then this is Jameson's of Shetland Spindrift in Plum. Plum, 585 Plum. I have a bunch of these. I got them on eBay and I have a bunch of them. And I, this is not the one I use. This is like a new one. The one I used, I've used it in like five or six Farrell projects. And I still have like half the ball left. And this is how big the ball is. There, it's gonna last forever. I'm gonna have to make like a sweater with these or something and just get it all out. Cause there's so many balls of it. Um, but yeah. So let's take this off and tell you how I did this. Okay. So the, I started with, with the white. I started down here. Oh, and this has a three needle bind off. I basically, let's talk about the colors first cause I'll just get distracted. Okay, so I started with the white and the pink as the middle. Then I started with the lightest blue. I just have one row of the lightest blue on either side of the middle. And then I had two rows of the second lightest blue also with the white. Then I switched background and foreground colors and I did Oops, this guy, the third color with the light gray. And then I also did the fourth color, the royal blue with the light gray. So these two with light gray. And then I switched to the dark gray background, darker gray, medium gray. And I did two rows with the second penultimate darkest. And then one row of the darkest, just like it's symmetrical. So there's only one row on either side of the lightest and darkest of the pink, like one row on either side of the pink. So you can see got lightest blue, one, two, against white, I've got four rows of light gray. You really can see the difference here between the light gray and the dark gray after it's been washed. I've got two and two, and then I've got two and one. It's hard to see it, but you can maybe see it better on this motif. There's the light gray, there's where we switch to dark gray up there, two of that, and then one of the darkest, and then the pink, and then one more, and then it goes in the opposite direction the other way. So that's how I laid it out. Um, I think on my Ravelry page that is detailed if you want that written down somewhere. When I got to, when I finished three full, four full, one, two, three, four full pattern repeats. The pattern is 22 stitches by 22 stitches. It is 176 stitches wide and it is 88 stitches. I did 88 stitches or 88 rounds of the pattern. So four full repeats. When I finished that, I switched to the cashmere. I decreased, I like I knit two together all the way around. So there's half the number of stitches with the cashmere because number one, the cashmere is DK weight. So it's double thickness. And I wanted it to be able to fold inside and I knew that the cashmere would stretch plenty around my neck. And the fewer stitches there were, the longer I could knit this lining. So there's the cashmere lining. And then I just knit till the end of the cashmere. Once I was done with the cashmere, once it ran out, I switched back to the light gray JNS two ply, number 202. And I increased, like I knit into all the stitches twice, all the way around for one whole round, exactly where I left off on the cashmere. And then I knitted a couple rounds in that. And then I did a three needle bind off because I did a provisional cast on. Important information that I did not disclose earlier, sorry. I started with a provisional cast on. So I unpicked the provisional cast on then. And um, you can kitchener stitch these things together. It just takes a lot longer. Like I feel like that's more effort because you have to like pull that really long string through a bunch of stitches. And it takes a long time already to do a three needle bind off. And I was like, I'm not doing kitchener stitch because no one can see it. And now I always know, not that it matters what's the top and what's the bottom, but I always wear this one on the bottom of my neck. So it has a top and a bottom. Um, yeah, and it's, again, like I said, it's a little floppier than 
like the radiant star cowl that I made, but it's um it's not quite as floppy as the snuggle is real because that's got two colors of merino DK superwash and sorry alpaca. Um both of those cowls are super fun to knit, and I'm gonna link the patterns below so you can buy them and see for yourself. Um, and yeah. Okay, I'm gonna pause this and go get the book so I can show you uh, how I designed it. Okay, so in this past fall, early in the fall, I think it's September, a new book came out that was very exciting to me and to many people in the color work knitting community, I think. It's called Selby Patterns by Anne Barsgaard. And it's the follow-up to her book, Selbu Mittens. It was published first in Norwegian and then they had to be translated and then there's like so many print delays right now with COVID. Um, and so it took a while, but this finally came to me and I was so excited. And so if you have Selbu Mittens or Selbu Patterns, um, as you can see on the front, it's like a ton of charts. There's some designs in it, um, but it's really, really a chart dictionary of Selbu Patterns. And it, beautiful photos and there's a disclaimer at the beginning that pa these patterns are in the public domain so they've basically put Anne Barsgaard has basically put this together so that designers can use it which is amazing and there's just beautiful photos and because they're in the public domain I don't feel bad flashing the charts and stuff um but these beautiful photos of like just folks wearing these amazing sweaters um there's a lot of variation in patterns so like if there's you know, you can see black on white and white on black and some things. So you can really see what they'll look like depending on choices you make, what colors you have. Everything's in black and white, so it's super easy to read. Um, there's no indication of how like wide or tall repeats are, um, but that's okay. You can fill that in yourself. I often do that. I'll just write the number of like, cause usually they're a square. So I'll just write the number next to the chart like how many square one repeat is to help me if I like a pattern. Lots of stuff cool like this where she circles the like important design elements and kind of explains what they are down below. It's so cool. It's just so gorgeous. Um, there's a big biographical, biographical, it's not a person. It's like a history of Selby knitting at the beginning. There's a chapter on that. There's also a couple of basic patterns that you can follow. Um, and some suggestions for patterns, but like also just like you can fill in your own. Um, I will be knitting a Norwegian style jacket at some point with, um, I don't know if it's necessarily Norwegian style. I would really like to knit um, basically a jacket with like Scandinavian patterns. I think I'm gonna use Faroese patterns actually, but I will, I'm planning on knitting it in, um, in Norwegian. Well, actually, I think the background color is going to be not white, but it's going to be two-ply jumper weight and like the dark gray, number 81, because I have that on a cone. And then I'm going to use Rama Lemel Garn um, in like a really light gray for the um, for the pattern color. So it's going to be black background and white pattern color, so it's sort of the opposite of a Silbu style. Anyway, the pattern chart that I used for this, because basically I've been trying to figure out how to use this book as a designer and as somebody who likes to knit, like I'm a, I'm a fair isle knitter, um, primar primarily like a stranded knitter. And one of the things that I like about the fair isle tradition and the history of the tradition is that things are one-offs, like everything's bespoke, everything's knitted, like to this, and they didn't have patterns, they just knit. And they had pattern book, you know, books of, of charts, basically like this. And they use them to create a different garment every time or a different piece every time. And it it's it's not fixed. It's not a fixed tradition. I may have talked about this before, but it's just like, it's like improvisation in the Baroque musical period. Um, things were not written down to be played the same every time. They were like the bones of a sonata would be written and then the performer would be expected to improvise. And now like we don't have that anymore because those pieces, like when you get that piece now, it's like X person's realization, like in the 19th century or 20th century of that piece, because many musicians have lost their improvisational skills. Um, this does not include jazz musicians or organists who have to improvise all the time in their careers. But a lot of musicians have kind of lost the skill to improvise. And it's sort of the same with knitting. We really rely so much on really detailed patterns 
and we want to make exactly what the designer makes and we want to know exactly what yarn they use and exactly what colors they used and you know as I kind of got more familiar with how knitting pieces worked and how the math worked with these things and I knit more and more stranded pieces I really um I really found so much more joy in like creating uh things based on nothing and or based on inspiration and um, kind of editing things and to, to fit the way that I wanted them to fit or to have the patterns I wanted them to have. So I always encourage people to do that. So this, I, in particular, I was basically, I was looking through this book and I was trying to figure out patterns I liked. And when I do that, I use, just use sticky notes and I just flag things that I want to come back to. So I flagged this one. It's on page 246 and the grid pages are not numbered, but the pages that have pictures and stuff on them have a number in the corner. So if you go to page 248 and you go back, it's here. It's, this is the pattern I used right there. So you can see 22. I filled that in myself. I just thought that was fun. I liked the outline and how it was. It's a diamond, but it's like the staircase is diamond. It has two different designs. I thought it was fun. So I used it. That's how, that's how designers work oftentimes. Um, so yeah, if you want to knit this, that's how you can do it. Go get the book and use those same pattern pages. I don't know. Um, yeah. So this is not a super long video. I'm gonna put this back on cause it's cozy. Um, but I have one more thing I'm gonna do live on camera. Oh my gosh, it's not live. I'm uploading those in like three weeks, probably. I don't know, maybe not three weeks. Um, but I got a package of Shetland wool in the mail today. But I, it wasn't an impulse buy. It was, I didn't have enough, I didn't feel like I had enough colors of light green. And I was trying to design something in green. And I didn't feel like I had enough light green. So, Brooklyn General Store has Jameson's of Shetland yarn. So, I went to their website. They don't have every color. Um, because there's like 200 and some colors. But they've got lots of colors. So I figured I would. I wanted to get like two of each of three different light greens to see what would fit best. And then like I'll have other light greens. And then I wanted to get some one-off colors that I had never seen before. Just to see. Also if I go to England in March, I'm going to be getting a ton of shell of yarn. Because it's hard to get here and they have all the colors there. And it's, whew, this is fun. Okay. So here's what we got. Two of lichen, which is kind of like a grayish light green. The, the cowl has to be basically the, it has to go with the same, uh, these same colors. Oh, sorry, these same three colors is gonna be part of the next cowl. And so the green has to go basically between the white and the light, light, light gray, because there's not enough contrast there. For me. I need four. I need four. So it's either that or it's gonna be, oh, I like this one. This one's called Rye. I think that one fits really well actually. I'm just gonna hold up these three. That's fun. Rye. And I think this works because it's a lighter tone than this light gray, which is useful. And then this one is much, um, much more gray and the tone might not be light enough. It's called green mist and it's beautiful. Let's see. So yeah, beautiful, but I don't know if it'll contrast enough with that light gray. So we'll see. But I do love this. It's so fun. Okay. I also got Dog Rose. I've seen this one a lot like on the website. I think it's like the last color on Jameson's of Shetland on the website if you look through all the colors. And I really like the heathered, heathered quality of this pink. I really like that a lot. Oh, this is just an extra. I really, I have used Highland Mist before. This is Highland Mist and I really, really like it. Um, so I'm almost like out of the one ball that I have and I was like, yeah, I'll get another one of those because I like blue. It also goes really well with green mist. Fun. That, that could be a nice little fade fade moment. I also got some darker greens. I got moss, which I've always admired. Marie Wallen, when she was designing with Shetland Spindrift, she often used this color. 
you can't see this on camera, but there's a lot of like very subtle like red flecks in this. And there's like there's a lot of yellow. It's gorgeous. Oh, I was gonna say I don't think I have. I thought for some reason I thought this was sphagnum, which I already have, but this is pine. It's a super dark green. I also wanted to have some options of darker greens. You know, like got a bunch of greens. There's one more in here. Ooh. Yeah, nice to have some. This is one of the most beautiful Jameson's Hotel in colors I've ever seen. It's called Sunrise. I have a bunch of Sunset, which is like a heathered medium kind of grayish pink, but this is really nice. It's kind of like, it's got, it's got a lot of black in it. It's got a lot of gray, kind of red. It's not so um, red. My, I mean, I love Jameson of Shetland and Cardinal. It's one of my favorite colors ever. And this is kind of like a slightly darker, more, it's not burgundy, it's red. It's just like really heathered with black and super nice. So <clears throat> there you go. I should open that on camera so you can see all these fun colors. Pretty excited about it. I'm going to go put them in there. Little cubbies now, my fair isle cubbies. I did record a video or two from my downstairs in front of the cubbies, but the lighting is so much better here. It's like almost... It's, it's after 4 p.m. right now, today, and the lighting is still so much better than it ever, ever is in the basement. Also, the basement is um, full of dust, and I have pretty bad asthma, so it's not super fun to sit down there. Um, it's just, like, a really nice place to have my yarn. Um, so, yeah, I think that's it. Thanks for watching my video about this fun new cowl. Also, when I designed this, when I started knitting it, I was listening to this book called Miss Benson's Beetle, which is a book from 2021 that just came out. Um, my mom had gotten it on Audible because she really likes the author, Juliet, or the reader, Juliet Stevenson, who also narrates all of Jane Austen. Follow up to my last video. Juliet Stevenson also narrates all of Jane Austen and like Middlemarch and a bunch of other like older books and a bunch of newer books. I think it's like her main job is just to like read audiobooks and she's super good. Um, and the, that's what I was, that's what I think of every time I put this on. I don't think I was inspired by the idea of a beetle. This is just like a fun cowl, but I, I think of the book every time I wear this cowl and I wonder if other people, I'm sure other people have that same association. Like when you were knitting this sock, you were watching this show. And so every time you see the socks or put them on, you think about the show or something. <laughs> I just think that's really charming. Um, to have that, unless it's something that you don't like, which can be really sad and difficult. But yeah, I, I really enjoy them. Um, I really, I really enjoy all this Shetland wool and my association with a, with a really nice book. And the cashmere. And I felt really um, excited that I found it such a like useful use for some like one-off skein that my brother you know like so excited to get me some really nice cashmere yarn thought it was like such a luxury it is such a luxury it's just that I like don't use it very often I was like what am I gonna do with that and then I was like I have the perfect thing so if you have a skein like that that's what I always say like this is just like a gray color like it's not like I needed to show it to the world it's just like for me and my neck <laughs> and it's so soft and warm and cozy and this is a much better like cowl just that like sit here and it's not it doesn't stay up like super high like it would have if I lined it in Shetland wool as well instead of cashmere so it does stay up outside if I wear I have over ear headphones are these big beats and if I'm wearing them I can pull it up like this and like secure it under the headphone and then it will stay up when I'm walking along the harbor if it's really cold so that's fun um, but yeah, I think that's it. So thank you for watching. This has been Tiny Desk Knitting with Emma. Bye!